a lot of people do say that you know modern day and ac3 was the best but like really like what was great about modern day was this entire like juxtaposition from the ancestor story to the modern day like it was like a different plan a different game i love that specifically about like an ac1 where it looks so different you've got different filters over the screen the cameras at a different angle you can't run uh the things you interact like it's so different it's a puzzle game it's a net like it's a narrative puzzle uh game you're just walking around like this dialogue and all of that stuff like you're, you're figuring out like oh what can i interact with and like what, what can i do here like it's it completely different to the inanimous gameplay and i love that it's like two different games running parallel that have like this cohesion between each other that i think made the modern day so satisfying and then when you play ac3 it's like i get why people like it. it's desmond fucking assassinating templars in the modern day i get it um and you always had to have a bit of that you always did um i'm not mad at the inclusion of that i'm mad that it's the focus um because you lose really that juxtaposition between the modern day and the ancestor story because you're just you're doing exactly what connor does it's just reskinned to look like modern and you lose mystery and intrigue you lose those core character moments where like that like i always use it but the moment where you're underneath the villa out of torre with lucy and there's just this great banter between lucy and desmond and they're building character together and like you've got the bleeding effect coming through and like oh it's so beautifully done um it's so great um but in ac3 it's like there's so much less of that and it's just the same stuff you do in the animus but out of the animus and there's nothing wrong with having those action sequences. Like, look at the end of AC2. You're doing what Ezio does, but you're doing it as Desmond. But it's so cool because it's not the focus. It's this thing that happens so sparingly. The rest of the modern day is all this mystery, intrigue, character dialogue and stuff. Um, and then you get when Desmond does fight, you're like, oh, wow, that's really cool. But it's not the focus. But you do it so much in the modern day of AC3 that it becomes meaningless. Like, it's just that's all you do like imagine how cool it would be is if you keep the abstergo bit because i think that's really cool and it's a payoff because you have a moment of combat that leads up to getting the apple of eden and using the apple of eden i think that's really cool especially like having it be when like desmond's journey up to this point he goes back into abstergo he assassinates warren vidic like it's fucking it's brilliant i still absolutely adore that section of the game um but imagine that you take brazil and it's not in some random fucking wrestling match. And you take New York and it's not climbing a fucking skyscraper. And instead you say, well, why doesn't Desmond go to an ancient Mayan ruin? Why doesn't Desmond go to, um, you know, a, what fucking um, William went to Cairo? Why doesn't Desmond go to fucking Cairo and go to some Egyptian ruins? Why aren't we going through and like having these, you know, over the radio, you're talking to Sean and Rebecca and there's banter. And as you go through you know, these ruins, Sean can fill in Desmond on the history of it and stuff. Like, oh, well, it was used for this thing. This thing was used for that thing. And then you have, like, um, puzzles that you have to solve in there. Like, it's all based on these puzzles, and it combines the use of, like, Egyptian or, or the Mayan tombs or wherever you might be in the world with potential Isu things. And you slowly go through, and then you find something else. And then you get lore in there as well. So, like, on top of having, you know, a puzzles, problem-solving, parkour sections, and the dialogue and character building, um, you also get Isu lore, like, finding out little bits about, so what was this temple used for? Uh, maybe it was a barracks. Maybe it was a... Um, maybe it was just a you know maybe it was a power station maybe you know what was it um and so you have these you know elements of that in there and it changes up the gameplay and so you know i think puzzles is a huge part of it i think that's a huge part of what makes what would make modern day take it to that next level when you have desmond going out he's not going out to just do f epic fights against guards or epic assassinations or uh, just to do sort of you know general navigation through boring environments it's something different like i liked in brotherhood where you're going through these isu tombs or you're going through these ruins of ancient places um and they're essentially assassin tomb missions i think that's what was quite engaging about like a brotherhood went right at the very end like it's you're just playing assassin tombs uh from like the you know the main parts of the Ezio games but um take that and put that into the make that the focus um and make it interesting make it intriguing like what like so you're going to um these these ancient places and it's intriguing because you're finding out more about like well what was this and what was that for uh and like all of those parts um 
and that's how you get the power sources and you bring them back to the Grand Temple. Um, I think that's interesting. Uh, whereas what you actually have is just Desmond going to fucking a wrestling match in Brazil, fighting a bunch of guys and then running away, and Daniel Cross being there and you just punch him or something. Um, it's like, what the fuck? Um, yeah, it's... Yeah. And yet, we don't know why Desmond's hand glows. They never, they never said anything about that, ever. They never did anything with it. I don't know if Darby's ever said why he did that, but it never goes anywhere, so... And that's the thing, like, when you're in a combat environment or you're in, like, a tent, like, a, I don't know, intense environment, whatever you want to call it, in Assassin's Creed 3, you, the the dialogue that you have with the characters is all about the situation you're in. It's like, oh, avoid these guards because you might, you know, do this. And it's all information to the player. It's all stuff that you've got to absorb to be able to get through this set piece um, of, like, whether it's combat or stealth or whatever. And it gives no room for levity in character moments. Um... And that's what you would get from an areas that have no enemies. And it's literally just Desmond going about doing, you know, parkour puzzles, doing actual puzzles, problem solving and learning about lore and history would be all of the dialogue that you'd have over you, over the radio would be character building. It'd be genuinely interesting. It wouldn't just be information for the player to play the game better. Um, like, it, yeah, ACD misses the mark in a lot of ways. The one thing I wouldn't change is the Abstogo section, like I said, so... I, I, I still love that, and I think it has its place, and I think it's good, but it would have a lot more impact were every other mission not also a random combat scenario, or fighting bit, or stealth, or, you know, action-oriented. Have it take a different approach. You know? And I think that's what uh, Valhalla does nicely, is I like that when you're in the Isu Temple in Valhalla as Layla, you the all of the dialogue that comes to you is Layla talking about what she can see, Sean giving information, Rebecca giving information, Sean talking about like what this place was used for, like oh well it, you know they you they like how the Isu gained power from the tectonic plates and stuff and like that's interesting and cool I like that, um, so that's what I think does Valhalla does well. Um, yeah, and I, I do, yeah, I like, in AC3, like, Desmond was so depressing, and, like, the tone they went for was completely wrong, and I think that it's odd, because, like, I get it, like, in a realistic scenario, like, Lucy's just died, he's just come out of a coma, his fucking dad's around, and that's fucking depressing when your dad's just about, um, with all your mates, but, um, it's, like, they should have all just been having fun, like, they should have bounced back, because the modern day was always, like, something bad happens, but they bounce right on back, they joke about fucking 16 c committing suicide like it's just it's way more uncharted like the tone is it's so different from in the animus to out the animus like De Ezio's story was serious like when his family died it was serious that like you know the, the the trauma and the pain that he went through followed him for his whole life um but with desmond sean lucy rebecca it's totally different like they're just fucking having fun and i love that about it but AC3 went for, no, everything's serious, everything's dark. And it's like, mm, that's not really right, is it? And you see in those audio logs that we've got in Valhalla, it changes the perception entirely because, like, they're just having a good time. Like, there's some good there's some good bits of dialogue, some serious bits of dialogue, but it's nice that they were just having a bit of banter in there as well. Um, and that's nice, isn't it? I think we need to give this another go, uh, but without paying attention to the chat. So I'm going to go uh, have a quick bathroom break and then also grab a drink because... I'm, I'm thirsty.